Hey guys, um, I know that you watched the, hopefully you watched the video where I talked about my best of 22. Now it's time to talk about the worst. Hey guys, um, if you are new, welcome to the Booked Path. Um, I'm Nicole and thanks for being here. Um, if this isn't your first rodeo with me, as always, thank you for sticking around. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, I did just do my best books of 2022. It was a rather long video. I think this one's gonna be a lot shorter because as you know, in the best of 2022, I said that I actually had a pretty decent reading year. I had a lot of four and fives, not a lot of DNFs, not a lot of worst books, um, but there were some. So once again, these are my worst reads of 2022. Um, and I know that some of the books on this list um, might have been favorites for you and I'm sorry um, that they weren't for me but that just goes to show you how everybody feels differently about books so I hope that if any of these were your favorite please don't take it to heart this is just my feelings on them and why they were kind of either DNFs for me or books that just were rated really low stars and that I just didn't really care for. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The first book that I read was actually the first book I picked up in 2022, which ended up being a DNF. And that was How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by KM Jackson. I'm not gonna lie, I really wanted to like this book because I love Keanu Reeves. I admire him so much. He just seems, he's a good actor and he just seems to be a wonderful person. So um, I really do like him and the thought of somebody like wanting to develop an idea to win his heart and in this kind of kind of romantic comedy. Um, I really wanted to read that. I thought it was gonna be so cute. Um, and I didn't like it. I think I DNF'd it after like chapter four or five getting into it. And the reason being was um, the way the story set up was that this is a woman who's supposed to be um, either late 30s to early 40s. She's not a teenager. She's not a college student. She's had lived life. And she comes from a rather wealthier part of like, I think upper New York or New York. Um, she's um, I believe she's an artist and she has some friends who also come from kind of the more well-to-do parts of the city. With that being said, apparently she has had this lifelong crush on Keanu Reeves, um, never having met him. And the there is a tweet or a news feed that comes through on her phone that Keanu Reeves is getting married and she um, can't believe it. Like she, there is a full chapter of how she is in shock like she can't talk she can't function what like she just shuts down from this news and her friend's trying to tell her why don't you see if this is a lie is this even real media is it whatever coverage um one of her male friends is trying to be like does it really surprise you i mean the guy's got to get married you know sometime but what shocked me is just this is like i said this is not a teenager their world is not upended by somebody a celebrity that they've never ever met um and it's almost like her world is ending and i'm like you never made an i'm like you're you're an older woman you never once thought about how to try to meet him you never like did anything i'm like and 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 she's shocked as if she was a 16 year old girl finding out that the beatles are disbanding I mean, it was just like really, really kind of dramatic on how she reacted to it. And if that wasn't enough, the next like few chapters of her are still in this shocked face, the same scene. One is told from the point of view of her male friend who I'm pretty sure without re having finished the book, there is a romantic interest in there. I would make a bold assumption that they somehow end up together by the end of the book. But without having read it, I can't be sure. But even he's like, like in his thing, oh, she was shocked. She was shut down. She was it. And it just felt like for the first few chapters, I mean, this was like 50 something pages in the book about this girl just being shocked over hearing that Keanu Reeves is getting married. And she doesn't check to see if it's false. She doesn't like do anything like she's just shook. 
And when she finally does recover, and it's like a, a week or so later, and she's going to go on this kind of date, not with Keanu Reeves. She still hasn't checked to see if the, like, she's so traumatized, she can't even check to see if the article is real and of itself. So it was just too much where I was like, I can't take this realistically because... Like I said, I'm like, if she was a teenager and, and Keanu Reeves was her world or she was 20 something and her plan was that she was going to meet him somehow and marry him, then okay, maybe I'd go with it. But I'm like, that wasn't the factors. That wasn't what was going on. And just her way of reacting at, to it as an older woman was just, I didn't get it. Um, the other thing to it is while these are um, older women and, and an older man, the way that they talk to each other, like they talked to each other in acronyms. So this is like, once again, they're in their 30s to 40s and they're going, OMG, LOL. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I have never met somebody of that age that spoke in, you know, like text talking or, you know, anything like that or emojis or anything. So it just didn't feel like a realistic representation of that age, my age group. Um, and just how they kind of would react to it. So I just couldn't, I didn't have the patience for it because I just didn't find it realistic. And I didn't like the fact that it was spending so long on just this one moment without bringing anything new to the story. So I do hope, like I said, I thought it was a cute concept and um, I do hope that maybe some other people found some enjoyment with it because like I said, it did seem super cute. I just, it was not for me. So I DNF'd it. Um, the next book that I kind of read that I didn't like, and it was really, really, really sad that I didn't like it, was The Princess Bride by William Goldman. Yes, this is the book basis for the absolutely wonderful movie. The movie, amazing. Go watch it. I love it. Dread Pirate Roberts is gorgeous. Princess Bride the book. Not so much. Not so much. I did finish this book. It was grueling. Um, I wanted to love it so much. I read it for the Magical Readathon um, as one of like the books to fill one of the course requirements. And I wanted to love it. Like it does have like illustrations in here, black and white illustrations. Um, one thing I did like is that while this is the story of the Princess Bride, it is being told from William Goldman's story, Point of View, point of view where he's recollecting it the way his father told it to him and then he interjects and tells you where he made changes to it and apparently this was based on an older book that um somebody else had written and this is kind of his take on it because you can't really find the book it was an old like I think it was an Italian text and this was kind of like um making fun of I guess of some of the history that was going on at that like way back in the time and it just kind of translated into the princess bride and then william goldman kind of talks about that so you know so it's kind of biographical but it's also the story of the princess bride um there are a few things that are different in here from the movie um there's a lot more to do with the maze scene um with uh inigo montoya and um the giant but it was just so boring once i mean i don't like buttercup in the movie but i really didn't like her because she's so like oh i hate you i hate you and then she's like i love you i didn't know what love is until five minutes ago but now i know i'm in love with you and it was just so uh, like i felt so bad because i really wanted to love it and i got this really pretty edition and i did not like it at all at all so like I gave it the lowest, I think I only gave it one star because I really, really didn't like it, but I did finish it. Um, the Another book that I read, I think this was also for the Magical Readathon, and actually this was for the Magical Readathon, Tropical Readathon, Camp Spookathon, it like fulfilled a bunch of requirements. And that is Sam and Elsa's Last Hurrah by Rachel Kahn and David Levithan. These are the um, authors who wrote Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. I've not read it, I have not watched the movie, but I know that it has a lot of acclaim to it, so I thought this would be really kind of fun and cutesy. It was not, it was annoying, the characters were annoying, the whole, like, I don't feel like I learned anything, the characters, I don't felt like they grew to any point. 
basically what you have is you have a brother and sister who have a rich uh, aunt or relative that lives in the city and she has this beautiful penthouse and every year on like New Year's Eve they throw these elaborate parties with alcohol and they are allowed to invite like three guests a piece and the other person is not allowed to know which three guests you have picked until they arrive so they try to like get under their sibling's skin by inviting like ex-lovers or like people they really don't like or maybe somebody they want them to like hook up with and it's just kind of the craziness that ensues over this one night and just I didn't care like I said I didn't care for the characters I didn't care for the brother and sister I felt like there wasn't a whole lot of growth for the characters in this story it was just this one kind of night and by the end of it yeah I was just ready to be done it was ready to be done so one star because I did finish it I don't know if I'll pick up Nick and Nora's infinite playlist because honestly if it's like this I might just skip the book and watch the movie but I no no <laughs> um another book that I got I got this on at a discount um site um and that was Damsel by Alana K. Arnold. This book I ended up finding out had a lot of controversy about it. Um, if you want to know about it, look into the book. You can, I'm, I'm not going to go over that here. But there was a lot of controversy, which actually made it pique my interest. And I wanted to read it even more to be like, okay, what is this really about? Um, because they were, they said there was like a lot of triggers in here. There are a few, there's some implied triggers. And there is a lot of animal cruelty in this. It was just yeah um very predictable um to me it wasn't as horrible as everybody kind of said it was um supposed to be um the th uh assault that they talk about it's more implied than actually read about um, it's kind of one of those things that you kind of know this is what happened, but they don't go into detail about it. Um, so for the, you know, like I said, it was just, it was pretty cool. I, you basically have this guy who for centuries, he's a prince and for centuries, every generation of prince has to go and fight a dragon, save the damsel in distress, bring her back, marry her. Um, you pretty much know what the heck is going on from the very first part. You can predict who this girl is, who the damsel is. The damsel comes out and when she, he rescues her, she's almost like a toddler. She's like, what is that? What is yellow? What does this mean? Like she has no idea of the world around her. And the prince is like, you don't need to know. I'll take care of you. And I'm the only thing you need to worry about. And you just need to kind of please me and, is that whole kind of relationship dynamic it's not like there I think is like one slightly spicy scene which is kind of force which once again triggers um very patriarchal society the women are you know you either cook you clean or you you know give us you know um predictable ending I knew it was going to happen this was another one I just wanted to be done with um read the whole thing like I didn't want to dnf it because I knew it was a controversial book so I really wanted to read it never got any better for me I know that this is a book that many many people have loved and if you loved it good on you I did not I just did not I didn't care for it any which way and so yeah one star I just didn't like it um, another book that I DNF'd was the first book in the Rosetta Academy series, and that is Of Curses and Kisses by Sandia Menon. Um, you basically have, um, two girls, they, they seemingly come from like an Indian background, like from India, and they have that kind of traditional, it's not saying that they come from India, but the, the culture and the, the spices that they talk about, they give India vibes. And they, there's Princess Jaya Rao who comes from the Rao family and she has a younger sister that she's very protective over. Something has happened with the younger sister to cause controversy for the family. So they think it's better for them to go to Rosetta Academy, which is an academy or almost like a college for 
princesses, princes, upper echelons of society, mogul daughters, things like that. Um, never, and what you end up finding out is one of her intentions of going there. She finds out that this guy, Gray Emerson, goes there who is an upper echelon guy and apparently he is the guy that destroyed her family. Right off the bat, I knew Gray Emerson did not destroy her family. Yes, I skimmed ahead um, as well to verify. So spoiler on that, I am sorry. Um, although it does create the tension for it. Why I DNF'd this, I could not support Princess Jaya, the main character in this book. I, she was just so seething vengeance, revenge, without thinking of anything else. You know, the blinders were on. She didn't think how this would affect. She didn't even ask her sister if she could do revenge on her part. She just wants to destroy Grant Emerson. Never, you know, validated whether or not he was the one that actually did anything. She's just like jumping the gun and she just wants to cause this epic demise. Um, and then for her sister, she's so controlling over her sister that it results in her really kind of bullying her sister and controlling every aspect. Oh, don't go and do this. Don't be caught by this. No, I can't let you, you know, do that. When her sister says she wants to go to school for engineering, I was like, that's amazing because she's a princess that could do anything else or nothing at all. She wants to go to school for engineering, which I mean, that requires brain function. You know, you're, you gotta be smart for engineering. And so I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Her sister's like, no, I don't want you doing that because not a lot of girls do that. And you're gonna be stuck with boys. And I don't want you around boys because we all know the controversy. And when you find out that the controversy is in this day and age, Oh my god, to see that she's getting all bent out of shape over what it really is. It is not what you are thinking it is. It is so feeling like so insignificant. And I mean, maybe it's just like a, a culture clash for because they don't, you know, maybe where she's from, it is a huge thing. But in the world of glamour and celebrities and royalty and paparazzi, I mean, it's like this on a richer scale of things that could happen. And I just, I couldn't get over it because I just, I just couldn't like her. I didn't want her, like, I really actually kind of liked Gray and his kind of story. So I didn't want Jaya to be with Gray. I didn't want her to have any sort of happiness, honestly, because she couldn't see the misery that she was just kind of causing. And maybe she does by the end of the book. I don't know. It just wasn't she just wasn't pulling me along enough to root for her enough to continue this and when i saw that this was a series the possibility of me carrying on the series with how i was feeling i was like not gonna happen so if i already felt that why continue reading the first one so dnf'd it um maybe it was better for a younger audience i don't know i just it didn't do it for me um the last book on this list um was light lark by um alex astor that was one that also had a little bit of controversy on i think it was tiktok i don't use tiktok but i found out about this um i think it was instagram it kind of ventured over um as a lot of tiktok stuff does onto instagram and um if once again if you want to know kind of what that's all about then i recommend you checking into the book and the controversy it wasn't as huge as i thought but i get it um, the book wasn't horrible. I did finish it. Um, I think I ended up giving it like three stars. So it wasn't a one star, but the reason why it is on this list is because it was so hyped to be this amazing book. There was, and that's kind of what some of the controversy was, is a lot of people ended up not liking it, um, because it was so overhyped. There were a lot of promises that I guess the, uh, author kind of said that was going to be in the book that wasn't in the book. Um, but essentially what you have in Light Lark is a world where different magics happen. Once again, it's kind of a battle to the death um, to save your realm. There were things um, that I felt like as far as the curses, each of these peoples or communities had to deal with, only two of them were felt really like life threatening and need to be taken care of. Um, there isn't a whole lot of spice in it, which was one of the things she said. There was a lot of um, the love triangles very, I mean, it's not really there until the very end. 
Um, there was a scene towards the end um, where the two male love interests are kind of restricted from saving her and just kind of how that happens and unfolds was probably the best scene in the book for me. Um, it felt very rushed at parts where it didn't need to be so rushed. Um, she waited until like a hundred and something pages in to actually give you what the um, prophecy that was supposed to be broken actually was. So you don't even know what they're trying to do for like a good chunk of the book in the beginning. There's all these competitions that are going on. One of the competitions is like an underwater one where at the end she grabs this tablet and apparently the tablet's glowing and everybody's shocked by what's on written on the tablet. She doesn't know what's written on the tablet because she passes out. But then for the rest of the book, you have no idea what happened on the tablet. She never addresses the tablet again. So I'm like, why put it in there if you're never going to address it, if it doesn't play a point in the story? So that was really kind of vexing to me because I felt, you know, like why put certain things in there? There were also certain characters I felt towards the end that really didn't even need to exist in the book because they didn't do anything for the main character supporting wise. And they didn't really help to move the plot on at all, I felt like. They were pretty insignificant to the story. Um, and one of the items that they're looking for to break the prophecy or, or whatever was not at all what I thought it was going to be. And when you find out what it was be, it was very like, what? Seriously? Like just really underwhelming. So, um, I mean, I don't want to come down too hard on the author because um, I think plot line was good. I just think the execution and how certain elements unfolded in the story, there were certain things I felt probably should have happened before other things. Um, I think things could have been developed a little bit more. So like I said, that's why I didn't give it a one star. That's why I didn't give it a D and F. Um, but it was still one that I was just like, eh, no, it's not really doing it for me. Um, but yeah, I'm like, so like I said, there weren't a lot. I mean, I had other books that I didn't really care for. And I had a few other DNFs, but not ones that I felt like these were the ones I guess I felt had more stronger feelings for why I DNFed them or why I gave them such low ratings. Ooh, excuse me. And that is why they are on this list. So um, once again, I'm sorry if any of these are favorites of yours. I don't mean to insult anybody on those. These are just my preferences for this past year. Um... Are any of these books ones that you DNF'd or you also didn't like? Let me know. Um, was there a really horrible book that you read that you just like, no, please don't read this because any advice, I mean, I've got so many books to read that um, if there is one that you read that you were just like, no, please skip this one, I might take that into consideration. Um, or I might just read it just to be like, oh, well, if so many people didn't like it, well, let me see. Because um, I do have that little bit of curiosity as well. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give me a, a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button to help my channel grow. I really appreciate it. And with the best and worst books of 2022 done, let's see what we got in store for 2023. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.